Hi, this is Scott, and I'm going to do a little demo of the Moon 568 trigger sequencer. Four rows, 32 steps each. Uh, I'm going to have it running on its own internal clock, and uh, four different sounds. Uh, these two, this is a kick sound, this is going to be a snare sound. These are both going to an old Tama TS-206 uh, analog drum synth, which uh, I found cheap on eBay, pretty useful. And these two are going to um, regular modular uh, envelope generators, which are uh, pinging voltage-controlled filters. So this one's going to a Suit and Tie Guy Sea Devils filter, and this one's going to a Mega Ohm CDS low-pass gate. So they're all percussion sounds, and I'll uh, show you you know how you put sounds in here and then how you memorize them with the programmer and recall them uh, even cause it to do you know recall the memories itself and uh, use these extra trigger outputs and the, the row stuff so uh, hope you like it so we'll start off there it goes one of the things I like a lot about having the 32 steps uh, you get used to the 32 and you find out the subdivisions 1 and 17 5 and 21 9 and 25 13 and 29 and then you can get, you know, pretty cool. So if we just go simple, and then this will be our snare sound. Nice simple beat. Uh, this is uh, one of those VCFs. Put another sound here. Now, if I want to save this, let me start again. The, this programmer, this is the old style programmer. There's a new one called a 567, one number earlier, interestingly. Uh, they're very similar in a lot of ways. They each do something that the other doesn't, but as far as memorizing stuff for the 568, I think they're very similar. So all I have to do if I want to memorize this is just hit save and then hit it again. Then I hit recall to refresh the buffer and then that's what's in memory location one. So if I go to memory location two and recall it, there's nothing in two so it goes blank. If I then recall memory location one, there it is. Pretty cool. Now if I want to copy this to another memory location, all I have to do is hit copy save and then come to a different memory location and hit copy. Hit recall so it's got memory 2 loaded in. Then I can add some stuff. And I can save that. Copy that up to another memory location. You can hear I'm just kind of making it up as I go. put it in And the way uh, GERT has this programmed is that if you go to a different memory location and hit recall while it's playing, these will just flash until it gets to the downbeat and then it will load in the next memory like this. Here comes memory two. Memory three. So it stays in time, which is convenient. Now, this assistant module does a few things. Um, you've got all these extra trigger outs. 
And uh, what you can do is, if you uh, hold this select A, any trigger position you hit here will flash, even if it's one that you're already using, like 29. I'm using 29 on row 4 here, but we're in memory 1. If I hold select A and press 29, it's flashing to show that I've now put in this memory location here, and you can see the little light flash when position number 29 hits. I don't know if the light comes out on the video, but it is flashing. So if I now save that, I come up to memory 2. We're now in memory 2. I do the same thing, same location. Save it. Come up to memory 3. Recall it. Put in position 29 and save it. You can see that what I'm doing is I'm making each of the uh, first three memory locations have a single trigger come out here on position 29. So I'll reload memory one. Now what I can do is I can have this single trigger come out and trigger the next sequence or previous sequence command. And of course the cables are on the other side of the camera. Always the case. All right. So if I take this and plug it into next sequence, when it hits 29, it's going to tell this to go to the next sequence. It'll load it on the downbeat. It'll go to sequence 2, which also has this programmed in. It'll go to sequence 3, also has this programmed in. It'll go to sequence 4, which does not, so then it will sit there on sequence 4 until I change it. So here comes sequence 2, sequence 3, and sequence 4. I'll just unplug this to get this out of the way. Now it's not that musical, but it's you know complicated. Now these row things are pretty cool. You can go up, which is what it's doing now. Up means forward. Down means backwards. Up down means ping pong. So if I switch this to down, these are now going backwards. down, they do ping pong. I do not have my dog on voltage controlled triggers. I wish I did. I don't know what she's barking at. Now, if you want to go back to the up direction, it works fine, but you're not in time. So what I do is I just hit the reset when this comes to the downbeat. And it's in time again. Pretty cool, huh? The next video I'll be showing this running uh, on an external clock uh, with different subdivisions from the STG time divider, running it at 16th and 16th note triplets and stuff on different rows, which is a lot of fun. Thanks for watching.